scientists have known of the damaging effects of radiation on health since shortly after x-rays were discovered at the turn of the century. The nuclear bombing of Japan in the Second World War caused massive destruction of the environment. We now recognize radiation to be one of the most hazardous substances on Earth, persisting for thousands of years. One of the difficulties with understanding the relationship between radiation and breast cancer was the Hiroshima and Nagasaki studies. Uh, in the beginning, the researchers were looking at what was first cause of death. And so instead of looking at how many people had breast cancer, they looked at deaths. They finally reported an incidence rate and at that point we found that breast cancer had tripled in the Japanese population whereas other cancers more connected with radiation in people's mind like lung and colon cancer had doubled so it was the it was increased by the greatest amount uh, and had been missed by the researchers because of their focus on death Since World War II, ongoing nuclear testing has been conducted by a number of countries and radioactive residues can now be traced worldwide in milk and water, fruits and vegetables, meat and fish. The catastrophe at Chernobyl in 1986 caused massive devastation. The radiation released in that accident was over a hundred times greater than that of Hiroshima. And closer to home, the nuclear accident at Three Mile Island destroyed our belief that North Americans could safely distance themselves from such disasters. We can't avoid the radiation that's right in our own backyard. Exactly how much radiation are we being exposed to? Exactly how much is safe? There is no level of radiation that will not cause cellular damage. But in order to see the result of this damage, it sometimes takes 20 or 30 years, called the latency period. Uh, in Japan, young girls under age 10 exposed to the radiation, when they reached maturity, had six times the expected rate of breast cancer. Uh, we sometimes forget that during the uh, atmospheric nuclear weapon testing from 1946 to 63 we blanketed North America with radioactive fallout it was measured in milk uh, it was measured in other foods and uh, children born during that period were exposed in utero and in early childhood to radiation that was not normal to our environment And if we look at the source of most of our pollution, uh, we'll find that it comes from preoccupation with creating megadeath. For example, World War I, uh, chlorine gas was separated out. Since then, we have tens of thousands of compounds containing chlorine, which are not natural to our environment. How the environment affects human health is really quite complex, and I think we have to be careful about oversimplifying it. Uh, many of the things that are in, that we use that are we consider environmental um, poisons or toxins actually have helped human health. You know, the fact that we have less um, bacteria and bugs and germs around is a result of things like pesticides and and um, other uh, elements that have been used in in um, in our environment. On the other hand, there's no free lunch, and I think again we have we haven't always weighed the risks of these against the benefits, and people are starting to. Look look at how the larger environment affects human health. What we've done uh, in the Western world is we've taken hand-me-downs that the military would like to water down and sell to the public. So you take the pesticides, herbicides, and defoliants. They water them down a little and they tell you it's good for your fields and your crops and you won't have to weed the garden uh, or you have a nice looking golf course. And what we're finding out is these things that were designed to kill are killing people. Over 30 years ago, renowned biologist Rachel Carson first alerted us through her famous book, Silent Spring 
to the dangers of poisoning the earth with toxic chemicals. Carson recognized as well that modern chemistry created some powerful tools for society. Yet, because of her concern about pesticides, she was ridiculed by some of the chemical industry as an ignorant and hysterical woman who wanted to turn the earth over to insects. Why would a woman with no children be concerned about the future, they asked. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were spent trying to discredit her. Rachel Carson died of breast cancer in 1964. First, I hope this committee will give serious consideration to a much neglected problem, that of the right of the citizen to be secure in his own home against the intrusion of poisons applied by other persons. I speak not as a lawyer, but as a biologist and as a human being. But I strongly feel that this is or should be one of the basic human rights. I need to tell the truth. I can't lie anymore. I need to do what's right. I know that's what my life is for I can't be quiet anymore It's taken a very long time for Rachel Carson to come into her own, unfortunately. She was, you know, a pioneer back in the 60s. She was a woman, so right away she had a lot of things going against her, primarily because she was a woman. Secondly, she was up against big industry, which was booming from pesticide sales and lawn uh, chemicals and you know gardening, etc. And what went on in this country was, is, is really criminal with the industry that they allowed all these chemicals to be used on this earth without having had proper testing of the longevity of the shelf life and the real effects. I mean, it was like, we have to kill this bug, well, we have to kill everything in the pond too with it and in the trees as well.